Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And I'm Brian Lee O'Malley. Special guest in the house to help us go through Generation Next number one. Enter now, the Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, man. I was threatening Jimmy, like, maybe we should do, like, uh, Age of Apocalypse this year. Go through all the all the miniseries and stuff. Uh, doing the first one with Brian Lee O'Malley on Generation Next after we just talked about uh, Generation X comics and showing off that Chris B page. Super honored, man, to have you here with us today to uh, to unpack this ditty. Yeah, guys, I can't believe you haven't done this one already. This is uh, this is an all-timer for me. How how uh, fortunes have changed over uh, this is this is 1995. So I don't know. Within a year, man, maybe we're run, months. running out of funds, uh, selling less copies. Not not going for the foil on, on this one, right? Well, they uh, say that for Alpha and Omega. Uh, <laughs> Alpha and Omega. If you were this is a big this is a big ass project. Yeah, but this um, Gen X uh, was only this is November 94, and this one says March 95. So it's less than six months. Wow. Yeah. They didn't waste any time rolling out these big storylines. Yeah, but you know what's so funny? Reading Generation X one and then reading Generation Next one, it's the same comic with a different roster of people. It's a remix, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but at the time, that was exciting. But, I mean, also, even at the time, I was like, this dude only got four issues, and then he has to do a complete overhaul of everything for this crazy line-wide thing. And at the time, they sold it like, this is forever. Like, we're never going back to the regular universe. And it was just like, oh, shit, like, this comic's over? This was my favorite comic. So I had to read this one. And yeah. then this one is so, like, nihilistic and dark and violent. It's very unlike anything else I'd read from Marvel. Yeah, man. Uh, but but uh, I think at some point it's like, okay, they're definitely going to do four four issue arc or something. And yeah, it's like, yeah. if, if that's your only real estate... To have a quarter of it, that dis that that's an abuse of the three act structure in a way because it's just your introduction and it's like, get on with it. Like, what is the conflict uh, in a lot of these kinds of comics where there's like this tremendous bad guy? We only know that they're so bad because the the good guys tell us they are. You never see one act of evil or anything with with these villains. It's always just like, yeah, we got to do something about about these bad guys and. Uh, like, let's flex our powers for 22 pages and see no evidence of why the bad guys are so awful. Yeah, I, I always think uh, we might be getting a little bit cart ahead of the horse a little bit, uh, but I always think these kind of training type issues are they, they spin out of like a good place. Like whenever early danger room sequences, you know, everybody readers would love them. And then you get the next generation of creators that are like, those are the best sequences, <laughs> except you lose something in, in the translation. Claremont figured out how to do it in two, three pages and get you through it, man, and then bring on Proteus. Uh, I'll just linger for one one more second to point out how great I think Colossus looks on this cover. This is a, this is a sort of a piece of um, Bachalo's Ghost Rider 2099. He would have these kinds of marks would be the kind of col Colossus metal texture with... Um, you know, black shadow on it. I'll tell you, these kind of lines for, you know, whatever that is, the metal or whatever hoses, we've seen it on some characters and stuff like that. Uh, even Kitty's costume has some of that. Pain in the ass. Like all those lines oh, yeah. and then you're leaving a little white spot at the top of each line or at the bottom of each line. No, thank you. I, f I feel like Kyle Baker, like, no. <laughs> you don't get to do that. <laughs> Give it to the colorist. <laughs> it, it looks cool, though. I still love that effect. And then the way he draws leather jackets, too, is always influential. And you notice he also does it on uh, Paige's hair in this, in this different character design. Like she's got kind of like shiny dark hair now. Mm -hmm. She dyed her hair. Um, I was really like hey, this is six months later, so I was like, you know, I knew what girls were at this point. And like the, the cool, sexy, edgy, like redesigned Kitty and um, and Husk here were like very uh, influential on me. Like just just the character designs are so well done, and they look really cute. <laughs> There was that one uh, magazine to like ring in the Age of Apocalypse that was all just like the sketches and the mm. thoughts from Joe Mad and all those guys. Like we're gonna have to look at that thing at some, at some point. It's called like Age of Apocalypse Collector or something or other. That sounds cool. Yeah, I never saw that I, before. I I think I had like every issue at the time, and I at some point I went through my bin and I just got rid of everything that wasn't by one of my kind of like top five guys so you so you kept the joe mad astonishings you kept the generation next but you got rid of gambit and the like, executioners yeah like the tony daniels or whatever yeah the there's a couple like kind of b guys and then i think i got rid of uh, alpha and omega because they're roger cruz and that's just 
doesn't stand up. Yeah, it's 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 a real heartbreak when you got that uh, Joe Mad cu cover, man. You crack it open and you're like, it's almost Joe Mad. Well, and then wasn't uh, one of them? Maybe it was Prime. The the next one was um, the guy who did uh, the Authority later, but it was it was way before that. And yeah, he, he was not he wasn't quite there yet for me. I was just I didn't like looking at his stuff. Me neither. Start the issue out with some action. It's a good start. Starts splash. with a bang. Yeah. And, and you look at this in black and white, man. That's that's a Frank Miller explosion. Oh yeah. There's well, so many yeah, good like, textures what is all through here. Behind him, is it just the ground? I guess it, it's just the ground. Yeah. There's also so many like digital effects going on, like these spheres uh, that are coloring then the background differently. They're coloring over like the line work, so that gets a little bit of distortion. It's very bizarre. I'd be I'd be curious to see yeah. this in black and white. Like, are these red lines added? in purely in color or is he white material something there to put those through the ink areas I, I bet those are drawn but then you look at the explosion it's like painted like a gi joe box like <laughs> it's so it's so inappropriate <laughs> i also love this turtle in the in the corner he just drew a turtle yeah there were a couple <laughs> instances in the in the first ish where he, where he would uh, have just like little weird idiosyncratic this dude elements. just draws he just loves to draw you know yeah Brian, you mentioned when we were looking at Generation X that his style, you know, just a few issues later, it sort of has undergone a change. Would you consider this to be the, the, the changed style? This, yeah, this is kind of the first uh, step. The first four issues are pretty consistent, but here, especially when he redesigned all the characters, I think that kind of changes the style a little bit. But then once, once we get back to Generation X, which is issue five, but it's like, you know, six months later, um, the style has totally changed. And it would be fun to look at that one day too. I still, um, yeah. This this stuff is like very. It's like a little cleaner. It's a little more action oriented. A little more cartoony. Uh, Jono here doesn't have his thing because his like alternate universe. He has this like crazy armor instead, and his face isn't blown up. Um, so it was it was really fun to just see very quickly at four months after the original issue just to see this remix. Same deal, man. It's Danger Room sequence. There goes Monet. She's like, uh, you know, the mother box or something. Oh, man. she's like a computer now. That's right. That's right. Um, and also, notice the pose. First first panel. There he, <laughs> there he goes. Always going left. How about that computer lettering, man? Yeah. Bleeding Edge, man. And it's called Bleeding Edge because there will be blood. <laughs> it hurts sometimes. And then here we go with uh, with Paige's redesign. So all the girls are like sexy now because it's like this alternate evil universe. And um, I don't know. I was there for it. It was fun for me. I feel like I've seen as you draw some poses like this, Brian. Ass first. With that. With that. With <laughs> well, that. also this hairstyle. Like I draw this hairstyle all the time. So uh, this this design definitely had an influence on me. Did these two have a relationship going on in the non Age of Apocalypse storyline? I think maybe there's like a hint of it, but since he has no face, it's like they can't, it's like the rogue and whatever kind of storyline, like where he can't have a relationship. But in this alternate universe, he can, and they're together. This is a fun bit of storytelling to have your, your strip of panels broken up whenever uh, Mondo, you know, sneaks in or, or, or shows up in between those two having a moment together and physically just showing your panel split. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty clear I feel, storytelling. I feel like Mondo, Mondo hadn't shown up in the main storyline yet, I think. They had just like drawn him in the previews, but he's not there, and then he just shows up here. There would be those characters that would show up in here that, that would have like longer life in the future, like, like that character of Blink. Oh, Blink, yeah, that's right. Like Blink got Mad Shine and Astonishing X-Men, and the way that uh, Joe Mad drew her was super sexy, super, super compelling, very exciting. Yeah. And then I think they had to bring that character back just from fan service they they put her in one of the movies she was played by uh fan bing bing oh that's she's it she's like in, she's in like one scene yeah i feel like this is one of your shoulder shots too yeah and it's even just, a version just, of just, just almost a variation of it yeah this book feels just, a little bit dark to me too um which i often complain about with uh with the computer coloring the early computer coloring especially but attention k fabers we need your help to support our comics making habits 
We are both Eisner Award winning cartoonists, and uh, this is what's available from us at the moment Ed Piskor's Red Room, the anti social network, the trade paperback collection of the first four issues of the graphic, violent masterpiece Red Room, the Outlaw Comics contemporary masterpiece. This is uh, 200 pages, so in addition to a very nice production job on the actual comics reproduced in this collection, there's also some great back matter, including the uh, first draft, kind of the, the writing in comics form of the first draft. Dude, this is the most valuable stuff in my life. Whenever I was a kid and I would find, like, glimpses of this, absolutely love that you included this in the collection. There's also notes from Ed on some of the details of this story, some behind-the-scenes stuff, pencils. Um, so a really nice collection. The other piece of Red Room that you guys need to put on your calendar is March 9th, Red Room Trigger Warnings. Issue number one will be in comic book stores. Uh, due to some ransomware issues, this may be the most rare issue of Red Room. So you want to pick this up whenever you see it on March 9th. Tell your local comic shop to set one aside for you. And there are some cool variants. This is your main cover and uh, should tell you pretty clearly what this issue is all about, <laughs> what you've got in store for yourself whenever you pick this up. But uh, here is my variant, an homage to Zap Comics, the Robert Crumb classic. A lot of people are watching this on their phones, man, and they, they comment on your prolapsed anus, but that's really a rat. That is a rat. That's that's classic, uh, you know, classic torture kind of techniques there. Yeah. Um, I, I first learned about these in Brett Easton Ellis' American Psycho, and I think he learned about it from possibly the CIA. So uh, <laughs> n nothing new there, you know, not reinventing the wheel. Uh, Peach Momoko, Cottage Industry, as you say, Ed, with another beautiful entry in her Red Room variant covers. And your own variant, uh, as you described it, sort of a more book-like take on the uh, on this cover design. So if you guys are watching out there, like I said, heads up, these are going to be scarce. So pick up any Red Room trigger warning number ones that you see when you see them if you want a copy. Coincidentally, my first uh, comic book is coming out March 16th, Hulk Grand Design Monster. This will be available wherever you buy comic books. And please, pre-order these. Let your comic shop know that you want one of these. It is 500 issues of Incredible Hulk, 40 years of history, distilled down into two oversized issues that will be out in March 16th and then in April. And uh, you're going to want these, the perfect jump on point for longtime Hulk fans or first-time Hulk readers. And uh, like I said, let your comic shop know that you want them so that they can pre-order these books. And these come in a variety of nice covers. In addition to my cover, we've got one by cartoonist Kayfabe's own Ed Piscor doing a fantastic homage to both Todd McFarlane and the first appearance of Wolverine with this original costume by Ramita and Herb Trimpey. Man, I dig that comic. This is one of those ideas that when I see it, I'm a little bit jealous that I didn't think of. That's a really good idea. You've got plenty of good ideas <laughs> in uh, Hulk Grand Design. I read it. Uh, Marcos Martin doing the Hulk transformation. Uh, pretty fun there. I don't know how many of the versions of this I, I've drawn in the last year, but uh, the classic transforming into the Hulk. And, of course, Peach Momoko, who we've already mentioned and probably needs no introduction to uh, comics fans out there, doing a really cool She-Hulk and Hulk. And uh, these are available in pre-order. These are not retailer exclusive. So order one of them, order a set of all four of them, pick the one you like best, whatever works for you, but tell your local comic shop to order one. Let's show Marvel what the kayfabe effect is all about. Yeah. Uh, the background on how this story comes to be, I don't know if this Jeez. needs to be in there. You know, you, know, you know what this is? This and that collector's issue that I was talking about, it's, it's a uh, manufactured kind of, like, you know how we talk about Rob Liefeld is telling us what Lung Youngblood is in, in interviews and shit? Yes. Like, these comics are scatterbrained as fuck. Like, they're yeah. just jumpy, dropping you into a world. So you have to read this, and then you have to read that collector's edition thing, because there's, like, little after mag parts where it's, like, from Magneto's journals to, like, tell you <laughs> what the hell you're about to read. Because you need about... $50 worth of investment of like these prior issues of like Legion Quest and all kinds of goofball stuff to even have any semblance of understanding of like what. And then all Age those hours is. that you just never can get back. That's goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at like the map. It's so detailed, oh, like all this information that you need. But this is a lot about like the retreat where they dreamt up this idea. Yeah, for sure. And when they speak on that stuff, like you only see glimmers of anything they talk about in the comics like the comic is just a big fist fight uh but then you might see like a panel with like the human slaves or whatever yeah um i mean and jim you're like a year or two older than me but like um 
I'm sure at that age, it's like, if you're 18, this sucks. And if you're 15, <laughs> this rules. Like, so it's, it's just such a fine line. You know, I, this is one, thinking about it, this is one of the last, like, not this issue. A actually, I do not think that Generation uh, Next um, had newsstand distribution because, like, I was mm. picking up the two X-Men's and the Wolverine. I or might be the last, like, newsstand comics I got at a, at a place called Galaxy News that was, like, a news agent. Uh, and then it was all direct market after that. I think in 95, um, I had my first kind of comic store that was really close to me. A comic store opened in the mall that was like f a five minute walk from my house. So that kind of became like a, you know, my place. And um, that's where I like started discovering Bone and started kind of branching out a little more. But then, yeah, for me too, this is kind of the end of the road for, for X-Men. I did read like a few here and there after this, but... Um, this was kind of like this. This is like where it dovetailed perfectly with like how my brain was developing and like my aesthetic. And, and it's just like it was grim and gritty, but not that grim and gritty. And it was cute and cartoony and it was fun to look at. And um, and it's still kind of like harked back to the X-Men of my youth in some way. It felt like X-Men to me. But yeah, that, that all faded pretty quick after this. Yeah, this is all for me. This is new. Like, I read this for the first time this week. Such cool drawing here. I like that. It, yeah. It's all about the drawings. Like, the way that he draws Husk at this point is really interesting and cool. Like, the way her, her effects work. And then this Colossus. Like, no one had drawn Colossus like this before. Do you guys remember if Colossus was in the Wolverine, the Weapon X uh, Age of Apocalypse? Because I was still getting that at the time. And I feel like I saw this Colossus and was super impressed by him. Yeah, you, you would see that everywhere you like you would see that in ads and stuff i feel like that's like one of the more memorable character designs next to you know the wolverine with the hand cut off and all that <laughs> right yeah this and the kitty pride who shows up later like and they're a couple in this um which which is what everybody wanted for a million yeah. years you know and like you get to have it in this like little alternate reality this pose is sharp as hell this is yeah. this is either from something or somebody copied this from here and I can't, I can't place it in my memory, but I have seen this pose exactly. It's badass, doesn't it? Feel, it is. Doesn't it feel like uh, he, he, um, he pulled some stuff from uh, Sam Keith's Cyber? Dude, Sam, Sam Keith, Sam Keith uh, yeah. might be where, where I'm, I'm seeing some. Or, or Savage Dragon. Those are the two that I would think, like, bulk wise and, and pose wise. Yeah, there's great tension in the pose. It's really the, the well only done. problem I have here is I wish this hand were somehow not surrounded by metal on either side. Sure. You know, it's too much yeah. metal. If you could do something to pop that hand somehow. Yeah, some of these drawings, I get those, uh, you know, those Eddie P moments where, where I'm just like, is that an arm? Is that part of the chest? Like, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things. He looks cool, though. That mask is a good choice. And there's your uh, almost like your Joe Mad one eye, one giant eyeball. It was the era, oh, man. Yeah. That mid 90s. Yeah. That was the new innovation in superhero comics. Humberto Ramos took it all the way, man. Yeah, man. This is a really, I like how her hair is bouncing around until we have a moment of calm and now her hair is all settled down as it's like, oh shit. Yeah, that's a great detail. He's just, he's really good at different textures and at using silhouette and using the black. And it's, um, it's all very impressive. The most impressive thing to me by far going through these issues this week has been his ability to do scale. Yeah. To have these big characters yeah. consistently on pages and still have the pages work and have a lot of other panels that read. I almost never see that. And that seems like once you've seen it, why don't we all copy it? Because that's a huge skill, especially for superhero comics. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you I, see... I associate it with Frank Quitely a bit. Frank Quitely is great at that scale. When you see this image and just like you're not paying attention to the spikes and stuff, it's like she brought her prom outfit to, to the superhero <laughs> fight after you see all the like the leather jackets and like the face masks and You're stuff. So right. And she's like, 1990s, like, I'm going for it. I will be the prom queen. That's so funny. With a Karen haircut. <laughs> yeah, she's going to have some wardrobe malfunctions in that outfit, but um, it was cool at the time. The spikes are pretty gnarly. I could, I could I see that it. being taken uh, much further in like a maximum press kind of a cybrid perhaps i i read this it's, now yeah. after that jeffrey brown wolverine comic and it's just it's kind of painful for me to see it yeah man Br brings back some tough memories i i get it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i mean that, and that's like that's what they're playing with it's fun you know she's she was trained by wolverine and now she has claws and she's evil and she's a bitch and it's fun really good use of the shedding skin kind of thing to kind of cut loose and do some gnarly stuff to it 
feel like yeah. that's a great that's a great use of her powers. Yeah, and like well, those powers, man, pretty dubious. If you, you yeah. could, like shuck your little snake skin, like what is that? Yeah, you can do I, anything. I don't know where you would apply that. This is interesting to me because this feels like a screen tone or something. Yeah. It's yeah. not right. It's almost more a patterns on here where the screen tones may be too small. Right. But then like other parts really feel like a screen tone. I wonder if that's messing around with digital. I wonder if he used actual screen tones there and, and then just it didn't come out that well. I don't know. It's possible. And I think there might be another shot where we'll get a better version of uh, like a screen, what looks like screen tone. In mm -hmm. fact, there's some on, on Colossus's face. and. Uh, oh, yeah. He part. probably was using tones. Like I, I think it probably would have been hard not hard to do that on a computer. Maybe not. They had those patterns in the other one. Yeah, I mean the other patterns may have been the, uh, you know, been screen tone as w actual screen tone as well. Um, you know, considering the time period. Yeah. The thing that surprises me is you look at like how much they're getting out of ink lines in terms of value and texture, and then to be like looking for more, and then you're going to put computer color on there somewhere. It just feels like, wow, how much are you putting on these pages? Sure. It's a lot of work. Like, yeah. a lot more work than you need to do. These guys are trying to earn that page rate, man. You're working on the X books. You're making a couple of dollars. Well, yeah, that's my takeaway, too, is, like, this is what you're up against. Yeah. You know, like, there are these guys who are super good and going for it. Yeah, and then you see the, the toll. Here's, here's a three-panel page with barely anything happening. <laughs> so that's, I mean... And it looks great. I always love these panels. Got to, but got now to... when I look at it, it's like so much less energy in this page than the rest of it. It's true. Although those are really good like perspective on your uh, claws. The oh, way yeah. Coming no, out. Everything's perfect. It's just there's not as much of it. Yeah. And is this uh, skin that's coming down on her? The effects yes. of his, like whatever that is, I guess the skin coming out, they always look really good and creepy. Yeah. I love this shadow panel. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> His very graphic leaves are staples we've seen in Generation X issue one and this. Yeah, it's starting to make me wonder about the seasons. Yeah, and how much time is passing. <laughs> right. Well, he's Canadian. We we got a lot of trees up there. Yeah, they are maple maple leaves, uh, to be yeah. sure. Guys are big I on always the I always draw maple leaves. <laughs> yeah. Like a like a real uh, Torontonian. Yeah, um, Ontarian. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I've been all over the place, but yeah. Because the spiral um, nooks that I love. Yeah, I always love that too. I used to draw them on like elbows and stuff. Yeah, if you put it on the elbow, it's then a Fred Hembeck elbow. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was looking at Fred Hembeck comics this week, by the way. We big, need to bring some of his comics on the channel. Big legacy, man. This stuff all looks great. Yeah, it's crazy. So many of these he draws textures. It so well. You know, like the, the, the gas and the explosive looking pieces, that's pretty strong. And again, we're still in a training se segment, by the way, right. everyone. Issue number yeah. one of this new uh, initiative, this new story Four issue launch. series, yeah, and it's nothing just, happens. Each char yeah, we haven't said anything about story because, well, there hasn't been any story. Um, but each time it's like, turn the page and then let's have a new character pop into the battle. Yeah, man. It's a reintroduction. And then, yeah, the last, like, two, three pages, we get plot, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Also, Mag you know, the, the Age of Apocalypse Magneto with his hair, but it's already gone by the next time we see him. <laughs> oh, yeah, he forgot about it. <laughs> see, this is one of those fascinating pieces, like, where the d division of labor is. Uh, you know, how much of this is the colorist? Because uh, you're seeing it over top of already, like, presumably white areas on the illustration so that's you know computer colorist but then is uh buckingham cu cutting some of that in himself this looks like a mouse like it's like one li line weight so that's probably colorist but then these bits Maybe. back here what is that is that buckingham i i wouldn't be surprised if the lightning was on the page it was just like white out or something yeah um, and then the next page with the castle like is that all buckingham just laying down like the spatter and stuff or is it Xerox? I would bet that's uh, that's all drawn, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But certainly that 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 <laughs> sky, <laughs> yeah. Hello, moon. Yeah, no, but like the layer, there's kind of like in the second panel there, you can see like some kind of spatter behind Colossus, like oh, back here. But it looks a little bit. Um, oh yeah. Maybe like it's just contrast. the way they scan it. Maybe it's the way they scan it makes it look so high contrast. Yeah, you're right, man. 
there's a little some some texture to it yeah i don't know about that like here you see even the colors going on top of your ink mm -hmm. so this could be something like that i thought like if i were going to do this because to get that splatter that's a pretty organic looking sp splatter do it on a separate piece a separate piece of paper Black almost ink. like a color holder oh yeah that could be it yeah or maybe maybe Pichalo did it himself um but yeah and you couldn't like get lot. you couldn't get this kind of thing digital until like the last five years maybe like a realistic looking spatter and stuff that's great Speaking Bishop, of that, that scale like how good is bishop look in there like in huge like looks like a giant yeah. badass and and when he comes back like it makes so much sense in 1995 to cut off the jerry curl mullet so like when you see this version of bishop like he's going to be in the joe mad x-men's and stuff after that it's like nah dude high top fade like he's getting a fade no more Jerry Crow mullet. That era is over. Yeah. yeah. I like Magneto and Shadow, too, as he's coming in. Like, this does feel like you're coming in from outside into this dark castle. Yeah. Pretty effective. Yeah. There's even and bits. He's... Go ahead, Brian. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying he's still, he's still like, so heavy on the ink. Like, he's still got that, like, kind of vertigo uh, feeling to him when he needs it. And I love that. Yeah, I think a lot of this has been lost in today's uh, comic book, you know, Marvel DC style because so much of it's just passed on to the colorist. Right. Yeah, yeah. It kind of bums me out. Like this is impressive inking. This this like panel of the of Am as a computer with like a, it looks like there's a movie camera or like a projector beside her, and so it's like a. This is not what Joe Mad would draw as a computer panel. You know, it's a really interesting looking panel. Yeah. Makes me think of like uh, steampunk. Totally. You know, like where he yeah. goes whenever he does cliffhanger. Uh, you can see bits of that interest here, here and there. And probably uh, I like Kit Kitty smoking here to show that she's evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would that. be cut. Yeah, there was a, yeah. in Generation X. There was a like Skin was a smoker. Mm. I had uh, I had to remove some some smokers. In, uh, in Hulk Grand Design. Me too, in X-Men Grand Design. No Nick Fury chomping on a stove. That's right, man. that's who I it's, had to cut. It's <laughs> changed so much. Yeah. But this is 94. Like, this is still people smoked. It was like, I think it was the same year Scott Pilgrim came out that they was it was banned in restaurants in Toronto. Like, so it's, it's not that long ago. It's so weird thinking about how, like, in airplanes and stuff, there was a smoking section and junk like that. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. Hard to picture. So that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, they come in, and I guess it's similar to Generation X in that they're they're basically looking for some of these mutants, some of these new mutants. And uh, well, the, them... yeah, this one this is where the plot kicks in, right? They find out Ileana, Colossus's sister, is still alive, and they thought she was dead. Yeah, and you know more interesting stuff because like we're not getting like a black holding line, and it, oh, this yeah. is clearly a Xerox that's 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 blown up. Uh, interesting stuff. This is like something he would do a lot in, um, what's that witching as something, something about a witch that he did a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. Um, that he, yeah, his, one of his originals. Yeah. That was, a, he used that Xerox a lot and those big faces a lot. Yeah. And it, like, like as a kid, I used to always like look at that real close and like match this dot with some phantom little dot that would be there and just be like, yep, use a Xerox. I used to do the same thing. <laughs> Try to I, I would always look, yeah. But then, Anytime there's like a panel that looks like it could have been pasted up, I was always just like, is that the same? Is that the same? <laughs> Get out your magnifying glass. Yeah. I see, I see the same three dots. There it is, Generation Next. What a time capsule. <laughs> totally. It sure is. Yeah. That's I mean, and yeah, it's, it's a four-issue series. It's very bleak. Everyone ends up dying, I think. Pretty much every character dies. And... Um, I don't know. That was exciting to me as a, as an angsty teenager. And sure. It's not not as exciting now, but it's cool that they could do it for four issues. Everyone's sexy and smoking and killing each other. You know, it's just it was an interesting time. The the like reading order for this stuff was always kind of dubious. You could find websites where it gives suggestions on like you know read these Legion Quest issues of X Men, then you read Prime, then you read like these in various orders and there's debates like there's a whole culture around age of apocalypse a whole subculture about like the reading order what this means like uh this has had a a, a life of its own and even um in later years these like trade paperbacks and stuff that will collect them it's, con it's controversy 
around uh, <laughs> re- reading order and stuff, man. A lot of people have a yeah. lot to say about the reading order of these things, uh, how, like the ramifications of these comics in the regular run and junk. Uh, it was supernova, man. It burned brightly for four months. I wonder how they're going to respond to our uh, somewhat tepid and uh, very ignorant reading of these things. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized We're, looking yeah. at this, Colossus is cool as I think he looks. Why does he need elbow pads or knee pads? Of all the characters in comics, he's the last guy that actually needs those things. They look cool, but is that what he's, is that why he's wearing them? That's the answer. <laughs> That's the answer. Hey, Brian, man, we teased it on the Generation X uh, episode, man. I mentioned that Shatterstar piece. Can we oh see yeah, that I mean this 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 predates the um, this predates what we're looking at, but um, oh man, the kayfabers will know too. The second they 30, see thirty thirty years ago, man, this month I drew this uh, <laughs> Shatterstar based on the Rob Liefeld. Um, I don't know what issue it's from. It might be from New Mutants before it turned over. No, no, it says X Force right here. It's X Force. Uh, if I if I remember correctly, man, I think it's like Warpath is giving him the fastball special. Yeah. And that that sounds right. They're using that um, not the concentric circle zip screen behind them, but the one with the sunburst, where it's mm. like the little circles here and all the lines coming out. That would be somewhere below those feet, under Shatterstar, man. Yeah, and I apparently I turned this in for English class. I remember it was on the wall of my classroom for months. I remember that, um, and I that's why it has this like it has this construction paper backing. Backing, it says Shatterstar, member of X Force. He comes from another dimension. He was trained to be a warrior, so that's what I was explaining to the class, I guess. So I don't remember the context, but um, yeah, I did a nice little Liefeld swipe. Um, I also found this one. This is an original from the same time period. It's a two-page spread, similar to the covers we've been looking at, but it's like, uh, this is uh, X, X-Power. <laughs> this is me and my friends, like, uh, X-Men ripoff. That's so sick, man. That's it's amazing. Purple ballpoint pen. All these characters are, like, coming out of different backgrounds. Like, he's in a sewer, but it's only part of the thing. And then there's, like, a jungle. So this is, like, peak, like, young blood was coming out kind of era you know and um the comics were getting shitty and and so was my art so Dude, that um, i learned i learned a lot since then is the most power comics thing i've ever seen yeah for sure man. <laughs> and, and and in some age of apocalypse universe there's a brian lee o'malley who's drawn 100 issues of that shit <laughs> oh hell yeah i hope so he knows all about the veins and and, and he doesn't lie about not uh, liking stephen platt super fun brian thank you so much man uh listen when when you have some uh fresh stuff to promote can you come by can we can we do this again sometime oh yeah let's do some more uh terrible comics one day (laughs) well drawn but not that interesting comics yeah that was a big part of of our youth man that's a big part of our channel that's goddamn right (laughs) that's why i'm here all right thanks brian thanks guys Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What is out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design. Tell your local comic shop you want one of those. Tell your local comic shop you want all four of those. Pick the cover of your choice uh, and and let them know to pre-order that book. This is when we actually sell the comics at this stage. So need your help, Kay Fabers. Uh, let those comic shops, if you're planning to buy a copy and you have a good shop, let them know ahead of time that you uh, you want to reserve that copy. It will make a difference in how they order and uh, we appreciate that difference. You can also follow me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where I am putting together basically my process zine of making Hulk Grand Design. So uh, if you're interested in how I actually make these comics, you can find a lot more of that stuff, original art behind the scenes at my Patreon. Red Room, the anti-social network. Uh, Trade paperback is in stores right now. About 70 pages of extra material to go along with the four issues of the anti-social network that, uh, that were out in 2021. But we're into a new year, man. 2022 is going to see the publication of Red Room Trigger Warnings, beginning with issue number one uh, on March 9th at your local comic shops. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Every issue completely self-contained, going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Four of those will compile together to create the the Red Room Trigger Warnings season of 
uh, comic books. You can read these comics before they hit paper at my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Uh, we have links to our link trees in the description directly below this video where you can get to all that stuff. What else, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them those margin orders. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.